<laughs> um, yeah, I can certainly thank the Lord for saving me. And um, I came to the Lord when I was almost 21. Um, I'd been hearing about the word since I was about 18. Um, but it took me a bit of time to come to my first meeting. Um, you know, at the time I was living a life that was very far from anything wholesome or um, Christian-like. Um, I was, um, yeah, it was it was something I couldn't put my finger finger on and try to figure out how to live that life. Um, I grew up um, kind of in a sad situation with um, my mom and my dad, and I was pretty much left on my own until I got saved. I was quite lonely. I didn't have any sort of parents that were constants in my life. My mom gave me away when I was 10 to my dad, and within a year and a half of that, my dad signed his guardianship over to social services. So from that point on, from about 12, um, I was in the system and I was just in a repeat cycle of getting placement and running away from wherever I was placed, living on my own somewhere as a teenager and then getting arrested, doing some time in juvie and then getting out and getting replaced. So that was just basically the constant pattern of my teenage life. Um, and it was actually quite a miracle. You know, when you think about when I look back and I think about how the Lord really was there to save my life multiple times, but also he put a person in my path when I was 14 that ultimately led me to the Lord. Um, when I was 14 years old, I think I was in juvie for about three months at that time. And I met a girl in there and we were fast friends and we had ideas of getting out and being best friends forever, <laughs> whatever. And, um, but we got out, hung out once, and it ended up everyone running from police, and that was it. I never saw her until I was 18. I saw her, and we immediately became fast friends again. And at the time, she was dating someone who I knew, and we, you know, ran in same social circles, and, you know, we were all involved in drugs and all that, like, pretty rough stuff. Um, so I didn't like him at the time and she was my friend so i would take her side um and he it's kind of a long story but he you know she was pregnant and she he asked her to marry him and i was like you're sentencing yourself to something crazy um but what i didn't know at the time is that he had a cousin that had received his salvation in vancouver and he'd gone there to check it out and what was interesting to me is when he came back, you know, him and him and I always, we just didn't like each other. We, you know, we butt heads. But when he came back, something was different about him and his countenance was changing and his, you know, there was a real joy in his, um, you know, his out, you know, his face that I could see. And that was very unfamiliar to me because, um, I didn't surround myself with people that were happy um, and that had that kind of joy. So it was unfamiliar to me. And his family kept, you know, one by one, his family members were starting to go to this church in Calgary. And I knew, you know, I knew them as well. And I remember one time they, they came to pick up my friend who was dating him at the time. She ended up marrying him. Um, and and meanwhile, I was getting all the inside information about this church because she knew she was going, but she didn't tell me that she was going. Um, and I remember a van full of his family members came and picked her up from my house and the door flung open and they all just had these like beautiful smiles on their face. And I felt very like uncomfortable because I, I just didn't know what that was about, but I felt also jealous of it. Um, and so that's really how I ended up hearing the word. And I think that's quite a miracle that the Lord put her in my life at such a young age. Um, and, you know, the other miracle that really happened during that time was having my daughter, Hannah. 
Um, I was pregnant with her at 16 and I was using very heavily when I got pregnant with her and I was lucky because I got arrested when I was only two weeks pregnant, which meant I could stay clean for that pregnancy. But because I did have such issues with drugs um, so and social services was my guardian at the time, um, their plan was to take her from me when she was born. Um, and so I had to fight for her when I was 17. I, I fought for her alone and I was able to keep her. And, um, you know, it, um, if I was compliant to their request. Um, but that was a real miracle to me because had I not been able to keep her, I would not have had a soft enough heart to really care about really my own soul. Like I, I just wouldn't have cared about that. But now I had this child that I really felt like uh, a, I needed to protect and I needed to do the right thing for. And that that whole situation was really what led me to ultimately decide to follow the Lord, even though it took some time. I didn't understand how to like be a Christian, but it wasn't about that. It was just about really just wanting to follow the Lord. Um, and once I decided to follow the Lord, my entire life changed and it wasn't immediate, but it was just a very slow washing away of these like patterns and these um, feelings and depression and all of the things. And, and I've had such a good life in the Lord, really. Like it's just been very, it's been grounded and it's been such a foundation for me to build and raise my family um, and raise my kids. Um, we've had healings, we've had provisions. We have had not one free car given to us, but two. <laughs> and the second car we were given was a miracle because we had, we had a little bit of debt. And I remember my husband being like, okay, well, we had had our third child and we were in our first free car and it was too small. And we were like, well, we need a van. And um, so we had had a little bit of money saved, but we had this amount of debt and we we wanted to pay off the debt, but we thought, well, we'll, we'll get the van instead because it's a need. And my husband had researched all the vans and what he wanted. And it was so specific what we wanted. It was like within three colors, it was this make, this model, this year. And um, it was like, all right, let's go find it. And literally within a day or two, um, a family member in Calgary called and said, hey, we're, you know, we're getting rid of this van. Do you want it? And we have air miles. We'll send you out and we'll, you can come get it and drive it home. And it was like mint condition. And it was just perfect for what we needed. And we even drove away just feeling like, I can't believe this just happened. And anytime the Lord has moved a situation in my life like that, it feels like the easiest thing I've ever done. Um, even people who knew me in my past, you know, who say things like, you should give yourself a pat on the back, you know, you've done really well. And I'm like, I actually, this, I haven't done anything. I, it's the easiest thing I've ever done. And so I'm just like really thankful that, you know, I was able to bring up my kids and in, in, um, in the Lord and have that foundation for, you know, when they needed comfort or they needed, you know, a healing or they needed just whatever they needed, it was there and they've had just such a great life. And, um, and I'm just really thankful. So.